Hello there, Year 7. I wanted to just spend a, a quick minute with you just to explain this water audit project for you, uh, which you'll be doing while you're on your remote learning um, journey away from school. So one of the outcomes that we need you to be able to achieve is to investigate the volume of water used per person in a household or boarding house. Evaluate if this is an efficient use of water. And so what we're going to get you to do is a little project where you're going to take readings on the water meter every day, and then you're going to do an audit of your place where you live, your home or the boarding house, and look at ways we can maybe save water in those, um, those locations. So let's look at this. So the outline of the task, you need to locate your water meter to be able to do this task and, and read the meter. If you don't know where it is, ask your grown-ups at home. Normally you'll find it somewhere near the front of the house, near the, uh, the footpath or the, the uh, nature strip. Now, if you're a boarder, this is going to be a little bit more tricky to do. And if you live on a home or in a home that has sort of rainwater tanks or a bore, for example, um, then this might also be tricky for you to do. And if that's the case, please let your teacher know, because we do have some data you can use to complete this task. And you won't be able to obviously do the uh, calculations for your own family, but you'll be able to do ones based on uh, another family that lives in Orange. Now, you're going to need to record the value of the meter daily. So once a day, you need to go out, usually around the same time would work best, and then record what the meter says. You're going to do this for at least five readings, um, but you want to go for about a week. So if you can go from, say, a Monday to a Monday, that would be great. Try and get at least five readings in that time. If you can get seven or even eight readings, that would be even better. Um, but you're going to put all your readings in the table below, and then you're going to graph that table. So I've given you a hint there, you're going to use a bar graph in which to do this. So this is an individual task. You're going to write the report following the outline below. It's all scaffolded for you, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do, um, even though there's going to be a few steps in it. And just remember, you're going to have a week to work on this, so it's not something you need to complete in one lesson. In fact, this is something you should be doing as a little bit of homework at the end of each day. All right, first thing we want you to do is to write an aim for your water audit project. You're then going to write the, the uh, location that you're measuring the water from, whether it's at home, boarding house. You don't need to give us your address, but home, boarding house, name the boarding house if you are a boarder. And some guiding questions. So water is a valuable resource, like other resources, it needs to be managed appropriately to ensure there's enough of the resource to fulfill all the needs we have for it. So in this space below, list some of the uses of water and how efficient these uses are. So you might consider things around the home. You might consider things like taking a bath versus having a shower, um, using the dishwasher versus washing dishes by hand, water in the garden. And then you might think of some commercial uses, or if you live on a farm, some of the industry and farming uses for water as well. And just think about how efficient these are. Is this a big waste of water? or Is this a good use of water? Now, this section here is where you're going to write in your data. And what you're basically going to do is if you start on a Monday, you're going to write your data in here. And then you're going to Tuesday, write the data again. And then the daily water use is going to be Tuesday's number minus Monday's number. And you're going to take the recording for Wednesday and the daily water use will be Wednesday's number minus Tuesday's number. Thursday, take the reading, Thursday's number minus, sorry, put the reading in here, Thursday's number minus Wednesday's number is going to be the daily water use number. And you do that for the whole week. Then at the end here, week total, this is going to be the total in this uh, row here of all the daily water uses. How much water did you use for the whole week? Now, there's some clues there on how to do it if you can't remember. And here's some questions to answer. What did you notice about the water use across the week? Is each day the same? What day stands out? And explain your answers. So, for example, if Wednesday seems to be really, really high, well, maybe that's the day that, um, you know, you or mum or dad or whoever else lives at home does all of the washing. So if we can explain or think about the reasons why water use might be higher on one day than the other. And then I want you to think about the water used each day and whether you're surprised by that amount. Now down below here is going to be the bar graph. 
where you're going to put all of your uh, data from up here. So all the daily water use, you're then going to graph in the bar graph here. And then you're going to do a walk around audit. Now the walk around audit is going to be really important because you're going to go and see if there's any areas where you might be able to improve water efficiency at home. So think about the water devices, toilets or urinals. How many toilets and urinals do you have at home or in the boarding house? Do any of them have water efficient devices? Maybe the toilets have got a half flush, for example. Is the device broken or leaking? And number of dripping devices. So if it's dripping or leaking, and it's only one toilet doing that, you'd write one. And if it's no toilets or urinals that are leaking, then you write zero. Same thing for the internal taps and the external taps. How many do you have? Are there any water efficient devices on them? A lot of uh, new homes in their kitchens, for example, have water saving taps. External taps, showers, baths, uh, hot water heaters, and then the total for all of these devices, you're going to count them up as well. Now, if you find a leaking or a dripping tap, then I want you to take a measurement of how much water is lost from that leak or drip and complete the table below. So what you'll need is a measuring jug or something similar to that that record water loss in one minute. It might be a, um, might be a bottle, it might be a measuring cylinder, it might be a kettle, but something where you can estimate pretty accurately how much water is lost in a minute. So you're going to calculate the mils per minute. You're going to times that by 60 to get the mils per hour. Times that by 24 to get the water lost in a day. Convert that to litres by dividing it by 1,000. And then how much water is lost in a year in litres. And again, a question there about whether you're surprised about how much water is lost in your house. And then there's some conclusion questions here, looking at water level restrictions in orange and what that means and whether your home would be able to fall within those restrictions. Now, as I said, this is a project that should take you a little bit of time each day to do. Uh, and please ask your teacher if you're not sure, ask at home uh, where the water meter is, but it should be something that's not too hard for you to do as long as you'd spend five or 10 minutes on it each day.